Hi, I'm Chad Deal, head of the Center for Osteoporosis and Metabolic Bone Disease at the Cleveland Clinic. The topic for today, denosumab discontinuation. When denosumab is discontinued, as seen on this slide, this is after two years of treatment, there is a rapid decline in bone density. Two years of denosumab results in an increase in lumbar spine density, and after one year, the entire increase is eliminated. That's true also for the hip, as you can see here. We feel that this rapid decline in bone density is caused by a rapid increase in bone resorption when denosumab is discontinued, a hyperresorptive state. So when denosumab is started, I always uh, remind the patient that it's forever. Their wedding vows were till death do us part, so we're going to continue this drug forever. This is the Freedom Extension Trial, which shows eight years of denosumab therapy in the lumbar spine, an increase of 16.8%, and after one year off the drug, a decline of 6.8%. But notice in the hip, the increase after eight years was 6.2%, and after one year of discontinuation, the entire increase in hip density was lost, a minus 6.6%. So why continue denosumab? There's nothing wrong with continuing denosumab. We do that with cholesterol medicines or hypertension medicines, but some patients have side effects either skin side effects like cellulitis or eczema, bone pain, muscle pain, and occasionally atypical femur fractures or osteonecrosis of the jaw. During the COVID era, which is currently going on, some patients still do not like to come to the office and denosumab has to be discontinued. Occasionally, with an increase in bone mass, patients request discontinuation because their fracture risk has declined and they don't want to take a medication for life. So when you discontinue denosumab and you see this rapid decline in bone density, not only do you see the, the bone density decline, but we see an increase in fracture risk and even uh, multiple vertebral fractures which seem to be enriched in, with a denosumab discontinuation. There are three trials that look at denosumab discontinuation and measures to prevent that after one year, after 2.2 years, and after 4.6 years of denosumab duration. And the conclusion from these three trials show that after one year of denosumab, alendronate is effective at preventing rapid bone loss. After an average of 2.2 years of denosumab, reclass or zalendronate is effective at preventing rapid bone loss. But after four plus years of denosumab, reclass is not uniformly effective at preventing bone loss and a second dose of reclass is often required. In fact, 50% of patients have bone density decline after one dose of reclast. A second dose of reclast is often needed. In Europe, they treat uh, with a second dose of reclast sometimes at six months. In the United States, we can't do that. So some physicians uh, measure a marker of bone turnover, CTX or NTX, and start an oral bisphosphonate if bone turnover is high at six months. Thank you for your attention.